Hello there everyone, um, today I just wanted to make a video about the Jurassic World Ultimate Sticker Album um, by Panini. Now, just to give you some context behind why I'm talking about this particular sticker album, um, I don't usually collect much stuff in the way of Jurassic World merchandise, uh, uh, but one thing I do like to collect, admittedly, um, is stuff that features things that myself, Tim, or anyone else on the Chaos Theorem team may have worked on. Uh, you know, throughout the Jurassic franchise when we worked on the viral marketing websites. Now, I didn't know that this book contained uh, anything of that sort. Um, I saw this uh, sticker album in a local supermarket, and um, and I was going to pick it up for my nephew, and when I brought it home, um, I was curious about what's inside, and I knew they had more than one, so I picked up two, one for him and one for myself, and I figured if you know, if I didn't want it, I would just give it to him to give to a friend or something. Um, but I was curious about what's inside because it said featuring the best moments from all the films. And um, I don't have it now, but in the packet on the back uh, that it came in, it showed pictures from like The Lost World, Dress Park 3, the original film, and well, all five movies. And I was curious. So uh, I just want to go through this before we go on to what's in there. Um, so... I opened it up and I was going through it and the first thing that struck me was, you know, this was, you know, nothing out of the ordinary, this page. But when I came to here, they had the story from 1973 uh, to 89 and they had the timeline that we wrote for the Masrani Global Backdoor, um, which was the backdoor terminal, which, me, which was a website where you could hack in and read uh, in secret information from the Masrani Global Corporation. And, uh, and I was so surprised because there's things in here that we wrote, like, you know, about Vic Hoskins cleaning up the pteranodons that escaped from the end of Jurassic Park 3, um, and things like uh, the Jurassic World construction begins in 2002, and the Ibris project, and even Subject V2, the raptor, gets a mention in here. And I can believe it. Now, admittedly, that's really where things end but I thought oh well that's more than enough for me to try and complete this book so as you can see many of the stickers uh, I've collected I've basically almost finished this whole book and uh, we're going to go through this whole thing um, and try and well we're going to add in the last stickers that I need basically because I, I've collected as many of these stickers as I could um, which was quite a bit of fun. I felt like a kid again because I used to collect a lot of the old football stickers. I'm not into football, but whenever the World Cup came around when I was younger, I always liked to collect the stickers for that. And I do have the old Jurassic Park and Lost World sticker books completely full of gaps. Um, I didn't complete those back in the day. Um, but yeah, so while I was collecting these stickers just before, um, you know, we move on to what's in there. Um, I, one of these stickers is actually a picture that I made. Um, now, Tim took this picture of Hawaii when he was on holiday, uh, visiting Hawaii with the family, and I photoshopped this image of a dead Gallimimus skeleton as a kind of homage, not necessarily a direct link to the first film, but just a homage to, like, you know, when the T-Rex ate the Gallimimus. Um, I don't know if that's... Some people took that as meant to be the Gallimimus that the T-Rex ate, but the way I was looking at it was like, you know, it's just a, just a friendly nod. But seeing that in sticker form was like, whoa, there's an image we made in a Jurassic Park uh, piece of official merchandise. So I was like, oh, I have to pick that up. Um, and also... Uh, one of the other things was this sticker here. Now, interestingly enough, this is from, I believe, Jurassic World, the exhibition, um, because they wrote what we wrote on the back, back door, that the first uh, dinosaur that Maserani held or, or sort of saw in person was a Parasaurolophus. Um, oh, yeah, he holds a baby dinosaur for the first time, so the Parasaurolophus. And, yeah, not necessarily the first dinosaur he saw. But obviously there's no images of that, but they managed to find a baby parasol office in the Jurassic World uh, exhibition and use that to, uh, you know, accompany this. And I really like that use of, like, external uh, other media to sort of give a visual to it. Um, and I will note that it says there is a mistake in here. So it says here, um, Masrani authorises Dr. Wu to create a new hybrid in 2012, but down here... 2009, it says the Indominus Rex and her sibling hatch on 5th of April. Now, just to give some clarity to fans who might own this book or want to own it, um, 
this was a date that we added to the Maserani Global backdoor terminal um, when the film was, you know, still coming out. And then we did get a memo from Colin saying, no, no, it should be 2012. So we updated the backdoor. So it says 2012, not 2009. But whoever got this information, wherever they got this information from, whoever made this book... Um, must have got it. Must have got outdated information. So technically, this is wrong. Um, that there, there's a mistake in here. But yeah, so 2012 is the correct date here. Um, but yeah, 2009. But it is you know neat that they uh, you know have a sticker for it and stuff. Um, but yeah, some of these images are really cool. We'll we'll go through it when I'm adding in those other stickers. But I don't know if there's anything else I wanted to mention. But yeah, so it starts off actually. I'll just quickly go through the sections. So you've got the story timeline, which goes all the way up to 2019, uh, with the events of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom in 2018, so we're up to speed. Um, and then you've got a dinosaur section, so you've got a whole section on blue here, which I've completed this page. Um, and baby blue, which again I've completed this page. And some of the stickers are like ones like this, like you can't see them necessarily because they're part of the background, but there's like, you know, one sticker there, uh, two free for five stickers on that page. The T-Rex, with this nice shiny sticker here. Um, oh, and it also, to note, it tells you which films these uh, appear in. So you've got like Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom for this T-Rex. Now, obviously, it doesn't say Rexy, or that name that I don't like. <laughs> it's saying the T-Rex from the first film. So technically, technically, this should say all five movies, because the T-Rex has appeared in all five films. You know, you see, like, Baby Blue has only appeared in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. You know, Mosasaurus in Jurassic World and Fallen Kingdom. You know, that's all correct. Um, you know, the Stiggy Moloch, or Stiggy, in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. So, yeah, that kind of uh, figures. See, like, the Triceratops, look, they've got all of them. Jurassic Park, The Lost World, Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park 3, Jurassic World... Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, which is surprising that they made the mis not really the mistake, because it is in Jurassic Park 3, but they made the mistake not to list all the films the T-Rex has been in, but I guess they're they're talking about that T-Rex, that specific one, but it doesn't, and I'm glad they didn't write Rexy, because, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm against that name, I just find it, it's too cutesy, it doesn't, it doesn't give you the awe and the sheer ferocious power, it doesn't have that ring to it, um, Brachiosaurus, it does say Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park 3 and Fallen Kingdom. And then you've got the Indominus, which is a cool page. And it's nice to see that they've got like weird images of like the Indominus. I mean, that's not Isla Nublar in the background. That looks like the Serengeti <laughs> or something. Like these images. I mean, this book, I believe, is like in the build up to uh, Dominion coming out, which is going to be celebrating the the film all of the films that came previously basically because it's meant to be the last in that generation of movies so they've got images of like Stiggy Moloch that definitely looks like it's out on the Serengeti or the you know the Africa so it's like they're alluding to the dinosaurs being you know around the globe kind of thing got a nice page on the Dilophosaurus here uh, with this really cool image of the Dilophosaurus right there you got like their ferocity level and intelligence level and all that sort of stuff. Um, and it's no no up here for the Dilophosaurus, there's Jurassic Park and Jurassic World is the hologram. So I thought that was kind of neat. And then we move on to the humans. So you've got the human section here and you begin with Owen. I don't control the raptors, it's a relationship. Looking cool. And you got Claire. Uh, you've got Dr. Wu. It even says, again, it says the films they appear in. And you've got Ian Malcolm. I love this shot of Malcolm from The Lost World. And then... Uh, Dr. John Hammond. Got Grumpy Hammond here on a shiny sticker. Ellie Sattler. And Dr. Grant. Great page. I'm surprised they didn't put any pictures from Dress Pack 3 on this one. And then we move on to locations. So this is a whole page on Isla Nublar. And note they've got the correct map in here, <laughs> not the one from Fallen Kingdom. But it has like all the uh, notable locations. So the Dress Pack Visitor Center, the Dress World Innovation Center, the Gyrosphere Valley, the paddocks, where well, it just says paddocks and it's got a picture of the Raptor paddock. Um, 
the aviary from Jurassic World, the labs, it just says all films for the labs, um, and it just enclosures all films. So in addition to paddocks, Jurassic World employees had a number of enclosures which varied in size and type depending on the animal's behaviour and needs. Several of the park's herbivores, for example, lived in one large enclosure, so presumably Gyrosphere Valley. And then they've got images like the docks, um, you know, like, so it mentions that the East Dock is where the dinosaurs were loaded onto the Arcadia from Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom. And then you've got this image here, which I haven't really seen anywhere else. It's like a production still from Fallen Kingdom of all the trucks, uh, you know, on the docks. Uh, and even this, like, picture of this lab uh, I hadn't seen before with this image of the, uh, the Indominus, which is the same one on that sticker, which if I just get back to it, I did want to mention that I hadn't seen... That render of oh sorry that I'm in the light that render of the Indominus before until I saw this book but I thought it was pretty neat um, and then funny enough okay so there is another mistake in here so Isla Nublar features in Jurassic Park Jurassic World and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom and when you get to Isla Sauna it just says Jurassic Park Free and not the Lost World which I don't how did they make that mistake but anyway. There's a page on Isla Sauna, and admittedly, it's just one page, and I kind of wish that they'd paid more attention to it, like, uh, on this one. But then, admittedly, there's not much to go off of. They didn't add in, like, the runway from Jurassic Park 3 and all that. They could have they could have expanded this one a bit more. But it's funny that they don't have the Lost World up here. It's the movies it appears in, but there's two stickers from the Lost World. So it mentions the Worker Village, the InGen Camp, the Aviary, and the Compound. Um... Site B was a name given to the engine facilities on Sauna, where dinosaurs were clothed and raised before transportation to Isla Nublar. Um, and then you've got beyond the islands. So you've got like the InGen waterfront complex, the Lockwood Estate, the Manodios Amber Mine, and the Montana Badlands. And then you move on to the, the films, like all the best moments from the films. And there's this nice page of all the current logos of each movie. And I really do appreciate these stickers because each one's kind of tailored to the style of each movie with these like different colored back uh, scratches in the background and I love that they use this Jurassic World logo because to me that's the one of the best logos because it's like really clear uh, steel and it's using the blue background and it just really distinguishes it from the others and I really like that and then you get the cracked sort of molten rock looking one for Fallen Kingdom and I think these five logos are, are they're really good like that they're the five logos to me um, the only one that's slightly different that I think is a little bit better for the Jurassic World logo is the one that comes on the uh, Blu-ray, this one here. Uh, that's the slightly better one, but then you've got like the steel one here, and then you know what it looks like when it's all been scratched by the Indominus and whatnot. So then, yeah, that moves on to the films, and each page is, you know, really dark in colour. So you've got Jurassic Park here. And it's really cool shot of the, uh, if I just show it, the shiny of the Dilophosaurus. I hadn't seen this picture of the Dilophosaurus before. So I think, I believe that's the Stan Winston maquette. Just a, you know, under different lighting. And then the Lost World. It even says up here that like, action moves to site B. So again, I don't know why they didn't put that on the page. And there's some really cool images in here. Uh, like this Pachycephalosaurus being trapped, like the animatronic. And then it moves on to Jurassic Park 3. And interesting about the Jurassic Park 3 one is they've got the Alpha Pteranodon, which was planned for the movie but never executed um, in the final film. It was meant to be like this big Alpha Pteranodon. But I do like that they've got it on there because that's my my fa personal favourite Pteranodon design from the series. But unfortunately it's just never made it into any of the films. Um, nice shot of the baby pteranodons here. And uh, the T-Rex Spinosaurus. I thought that was going to be the shiny, but they actually went for the them running through the Corymphosaurus Parasol Office herd. And then you got Jurassic World, which is all what you'd expect, basically. And, and they really expand on Jurassic World. So obviously this is their new selling point. This is the new sort of side of the franchise. But yeah, so this is like where well, they have two pages for each. And then Fallen Kingdom. Nice nod to the, the DB, DPG there. Um, it's a cool shot of Wheatley. 
This isn't a sticker. Some of these are like just pictures that are there. Um, that picture's already built in. Nice picture of Owen with the T-Rex animatronic. And then the end. And it says, see you soon in Jurassic World for the next amazing adventure. So obviously, I kind of wish they had like some pages or something where you could clip in for Dominion in this. But it's celebrating the... Uh, you know the franchise so far and I did fail to mention some of these stickers on the back we might see on there they have a QR code so if you download an app um, you know you scan this and then some of the stickers actually have like clips from the movies that you can watch and sounds like they have like um, they'll have like a little sound symbol on them like that um, so like for example this one here they have a little phone symbol but the problem is the QR codes are on the bit of paper that are on the back of the sticker rather than in the sticker book. Like, if I was designing this, I'd have put the QR code right here so you could always access that. But, you know, you throw the back little bits of paper out the, out the way unless, I don't know, you know, they don't uh, all come from one thing. But anyway, so I've been collecting this for a few months, getting all these stickers, and I finally got to the point where I went on Panini's website and ordered the missing stickers to complete the book. So, boom. Now, obviously, with my uh, nephew, I've been trading these stickers with my nephew, any spares that I have, and with uh, James Hawkins and Steve Hull of Jurassic Unicast. Um, I've been sending them stuff because they've been trying to collect this as well. And whenever you got the stickers in the um, packs like this, you also got, you got them like that, and then you also got like a card, um, like a character card, and these are like what you'd get with the toys, I guess. But I didn't really care for these. I basically got all of them, uh, aside from a few. I don't think, well, I don't even want to go through it, but I got pretty much all of these. Um, but they're not sort of, I don't really, they've got nice artwork on them. Uh, they've got, yeah, some really nice artwork. you got the two Pteranodon variants. Um... Yeah, you've got like blue, the Velociraptor, but then you've got like a plain old Velociraptor down here. All that sort of stuff. Um, and I didn't really, I wasn't really bothered by those. I did like the artwork, especially like on that Dimorphodon one. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that, that wasn't, but I had all those, but I've given those to my nephew. But anyway, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick these all in, all the ones I need. So I'm going to set the camera up on a tripod and let's do this. Okay, so we've got number two here, which is shiny blue to complete this look of Owen from Fallen Kingdom trying to reinstate his relationship with blue. So we'll just stick that in there. Now I know I might uh, annoy some people by getting these wrong, like going over the lines and whatnot, but there we go. So there we go, that's that page done. Nice completed page. Now, some of you out there might be like, why didn't you continue collecting to see if you could get these, you know, but it's quite an expensive endeavor and it's kind of like gambling, you know, you never know what you're going to get. So I'd open up packets and I'd, I wouldn't need any of them. So I'm like, oh, okay. So I just figured I'd go straight to Panini and just order the ones I need. So there's Hammond looking at the baby raptor. And it says here, 1986, the first dinosaur of Velociraptor cloned at Site B on Isla Sauna. I believe we originally wrote the first dinosaur cloned was a, ever, was a Velociraptor. Um, and Colin Trevorrow said that actually the first dinosaur cloned in his timeline, which he was sort of amending, you know, was the Triceratops. So we tweaked it to be that the first dinosaur cloned ever on Isla Sauna was a Velociraptor, which is actually a nod to Trespasser. I believe that's where we currently stand. So here we go, we've got the Indominus shiny hair being birthed from the egg for the, the wrong piece of information. So we'll stick that in now. I had to make sure I grew one of my nails out a little bit so it would make it easier for this. There we go. Yeah, it is nice to see them recognizing the timeline that we worked on. Right, so we want to get to the sticky page. Here we go, number 44. Now this is one of those ones that I said would go in the background image. So you peel it off like that. 
And then these are the hardest ones to do, so you have to line it up. So I'm going to try and do this just right. There we go. So yeah, I think this is well worth picking up if you can. Uh, for fans like myself of the movies themselves. Um, because even though there's some things wrong in here, um, it is a nice celebration of everything that's come before. And, you know, I believe this is the first piece of merchandise, I guess outside of Jurassic World Evolution, where they had the whole, like, going back to Jurassic Park, um, or return to Jurassic Park, or whatever they called it. Um where like they're re like they're basically recognizing that the last chapter is going to be looking a lot backwards as well as forwards or at least that's what they're proposing um but it, i just saw this and i was like actually this is you know obviously it's got our work in it and that was the major reason that i wanted to own it but um but it is nice to see them actually recognizing uh bringing it all together basically i just want to also point out look at this uh, shiny of the Endoraptor on like lava planes. Uh, I wonder if you guys can see that properly. I just think that's a really cool image. Uh, yeah, some neat stuff in here. And I love the coloration on this page, like to show the Endoraptor being all evil. Uh, and the Indominus. Again, it's one of these ones. Right. Make sure this goes on nice and neat. There we go, look at that, perfect. Okay, and now we're on to the Dilophosaurus, number 72. Um, it's funny because if I was, I know this is for mainly for kids, designed for children, um, but it is cool because it's like getting the kids up to speed on the franchise in prep for Dominion. There we go. Um, but if I was, if in a perfect world, this book would be, this would be like this thick <laughs> and contain all of the human characters and their relationship, all of the dinosaurs that we've seen, you know, all of the prominent locations. So 89 is a shiny of the eggs in the secret lab underneath uh, Lockwood Manor, or the... Um, not necessarily secret, well it is a kind of secret lab, but um, the re repurposed lab. I believe, uh, what's his name, Mills says that, uh, you know, they've updated the old labs. So that's why like the cages down there have like new locking systems and they've all been like renewed. Because I'm one of those people, I don't know if they were planning on growing dinosaurs at Lockwood Manor, or if they did, they uh, they soon realised that they needed an island, because dinosaurs are big, big and you can't keep them in simple cages. So I think they, you know, grew that tiny elephant or whatever and then abandoned the place. And that's some inside knowledge for, like, fans who know what I'm talking about. Uh, a nice picture here of Ian Malcolm inside the RV from The Lost World. Looking over the uh, the codes. That is number 91. Okay. Get that like this. Look at that. There you go. Malcolm's page is complete. Uh, and then 99 for Hammond. And it's Hammond facing down Alan Grant. Going for today. I guarantee it. Just in God's name, who do you think you are? Says Alan Grant. So we're just gonna stick this one in. I don't know how interesting this is gonna be for people, but I just figured that I was gonna make a video on this sooner, but then I was like, actually, it would be kind of cool to do it once I've completed the book. And then I thought it'd be even cooler to show you guys the actual completion of it. So this will be like <laughs> probably the first sticker book I've ever completed in my life. Uh, and I'm in my adulthood. But again, like I said, the, the only, I don't collect anything, really. Well, nothing, really. Um, like, I think one of the other things... Oh, I've got it here, actually. One of the other things I bought was this survival guide, this kid's survival guide. And the only reason I bought this is because it says it has the secret history of Jurassic World, and again, it has a timeline of our 
stuff. So again, it mentions Vic Hoskins and stuff. And I also think like, I remember for years between, um, uh, you know, Jurassic Park 3 and the, the eventual release of Jurassic World, um, you know, fans were talking about a, an official timeline. There's no official timeline. There's nothing. And that was one of the incentives for me and Tim to write one and um, put it on the Masrani Global back door. And so now there's like more than one <laughs> out there as far as I know. Obviously, there's the viral website we worked on. That was the first official timeline released by and endorsed by Universal. Then the one in here, I believe, in printed media, and now the one in here. Now, obviously, there's some mistakes in that, um, but, yeah, I, I always feel like there maybe should be some sort of comprehensive book released uh, and endorsed by Universal that covers the entire time and all the details and everything, like a, like a Jurassic Park Bible. Um, I would love to see that. I would love to work on something like that. So here we go. We've got a shiny Isla Nublar map of Jurassic World. Uh, this one I want to get right. Nope. Get that right in there. Of course, there we go. It's slightly on the... Oh, God, I just knocked the camera. It's slightly on the wonk to the yellow, so I apologise that, but the sticker's actually lined up. So there we go. We've got a nice... I like that. Shiny Isla Nublar. I wish they'd done that for the Isla Sauna page as well. Now we have the paddock, the raptor paddock from Jurassic World, which is where they were conducting their research out of the way of public eye. Because I don't think people know this, but the backstory for the raptors, if you look at the production of Jurassic World, the raptors were being researched on in this place. And the idea was that they were going to be moved to a sort of an arena where they would put on simple shows like, you know, what Owen was showing. But obviously that all went down the pan when uh, Vic Hoskins got his dirty mitts on it. So 119 here is Owen and Claire looking at the Avery as Masrani flies in to try and take out the Indominus. Oh, this is being a, an awkward sticker. So even up here, this was a sticker, the Owen running away from the Indominus. And blue down here was also a sticker. Oh my word. Okay, there we go. <laughs> that took a while. Right. So we'll stick this one on there. Okay. Nice, there we go, that's all that done. And now we need the InGen waterfront complex. And we've got this picture of all the businessmen arriving at the end of the Lost World. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for coming out of the wee small hours of the morning. Sir, you've got to come see this. Right, come on. Oh my word, this has been awkward. There we go. Got it. So 135, the InGen Waterfront Complex. And what does it say about that? This seaside complex was ground zero for what would become known as the San Diego Incident when an adult T-Rex escaped from the hold of the SS Ventura after it crashed into the pier. You got that right. Okay, now we're moving on to here, and I believe I've got all Jurassic Park, so we don't need to do any of that. Now we need Dieter Stark is attacked by a group of small but ferocious compies. There we go, look at that. Nice image. That's like a production still. That's not an image taken from the film. <laughs> look at that compie upside down on his arm. What's going on there? <laughs> All right. Consognathus are like my second favourite Jurassic Park dinosaur after the T-Rex. Okay. Oop. Perfect, right, there you go, the Lost World. Complete, the hunters become the hunted. See, they even get details like this right. So there's like a picture of 
the bull T-Rex roaring in the window and it says, Mummy is very angry, which is a nod to Malcolm's line, but it says, and so is Daddy in the thrilling sequence, the animals push the trailer over the cliff. So it's like they mention, obviously, so is Daddy and all that, talking about the male T-Rex, but they forget to put site B on the easeless order page. <laughs> I don't know. Now this one's cool. This is a nice production still of the Jurassic Park 3 Spinosaurus. Yeah, in all its glory. Okay. There we go. The Spinosaurus is in its place. And that's Jurassic Park 3 completed. Okay, now 176 is Zack and Gray turning around and you can tell this is a production still because there's no ankylosaurus in the background and they haven't lit the thing properly <laughs> uh, and there's no uh, CGI glass for the gyrosphere that's quite funny but I do like the use of both production stills and uh, you know ones from the movie Get this one in. Perfect. That's that one done. And then we move on to Killing for Sport, number 183 of all the dead apatosaurs. Which, no, I thought, I thought for a second that was a mirrored shot, but it's not. Uh, it's mirrored in the camera thing that I'm looking at, the screen. When Claire and Owen find these dead apatosaurs, they feel both horror and sadness. The discovery makes Owen realize that the Indominus Rex is hunting just for the sake of killing. Which, um, funny little nod, or not, not necessarily nod, that's not the word I'm looking for, but a funny little connection, the Killing for Sport line, you can actually read in the Jurassic Park Laserdisc book, there's a uh, short little section where it says the Velociraptors hunt for sport. So, I don't know if that's where they got it from. There's a cool picture here of Owen, I believe this is a production still, uh, going after the Pteranodons with the tranquilizer guns. Uh, let's get this done. Okay, 186. That's a really nice picture of Owen, actually. There we go. Yeah, that's good. All right. And then we move on to Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom, now we need three here. So here we've got 196, which is Claire and Benjamin Lockwood over the map of the sanctuary, or the, the model, sorry. And it, and it says, unexpected help. Following Dr. Malcolm's advice, the government refuses to rescue the dinosaurs. In the meanwhile, Claire is summoned to the estate of Sir Benjamin Lockwood, a former business partner of John Hammond. There you go. And we stick that one in here. Looking nice. I'm going to watch Fallen Kingdom again soon. I think it's a really good movie. Uh, 197 is a nice picture of Lockwood. It says Arcadia Project. He wants to fund the rescue operation and bring the dinosaurs to a new island where they will be left to live on their own. That's what he wants to do. But that's not what Mills wants to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Right, stick this one in. There we go. Right, number 200 is this kind of, it's a production still, but it's a kind of weird shot of Claire and Owen talking uh, as I guess Owen is about to leave to go look for Blue, and you can see them looking at the computer screen, and if you can see, the map is like looks kind of weird. I've never seen this image before. But it says, On Isla Nublar, Claire and her technician Franklin reactivate the tracking system and coordinate operations. Owen with the paleo-veterinarian Zian and a mercenary... <laughs> paleo-veterinarian. Uh, and a mercenary team led by the big game hunter Ken Wheatley track and find blue. Okay. Can I track and find to get this sticker off? Oh my god, come on. 
There we go. Ba bam. Okay, so let's stick that on. There we go, right, and that's those pages done. And then we move on to this one where we've got, oh, they're the last two. So 210 is actually one with a QR code on the back that you would scan and then you could watch a clip. But again, like I said, this QR code should have been there. Like there's enough space for it. So if you put that there, then, you know, you could have seen it. But I guess the idea is that like, you wouldn't see that clip until you get this sticker. But if that's the case, make that a sticker. I don't know, like package that in there and add the number on the back so then you stick it in the book next to it so you've always got access to it. Because I'm not, so I, I couldn't be bothered to look up all the clips and sounds or whatever they had to do. Sorry, Panini. But, so now like all these clips for me, I guess are just being lost. <laughs> being lost, world. All right, so we'll stick this one in of the Ender Wrap to look in kick ass on the roof there and then the last one is the Ender Raptor's head um, <laughs> and all the writing says will our heroes manage to save Blue and all the captured dinosaurs above all can anything stop this deadly hybrid well we already know the answer to that yes right so 212 right, let me try and get this one right that's a cool shot of the Ender Raptor Indoraptor. There we go. And that's it. I have completed the Jurassic World. And there's the back. Sorry, I didn't show you this. It's like a, it's got a nice texture on this. I don't know if you can see it in the light. Uh, but there's... You can kind of see it here. Like the, It's like embossed a little bit. Like The T-Rex is a different uh, material to the rest of the, the back. But I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, really nice image there. But yes, anyway, completed the ultimate sticker album. Now I can put that in my files and one day I'll show uh, my daughter. You'll be like, oh yeah, daddy wrote all this for the Jurassic stuff. And then she'll be like, will you please shut up about Jurassic? <laughs> but yes, there you go, completed, done. Bish, bash and bosh, done, chuffed, good. Pick this up if you can. Hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the future.